Hello, Resonate community. Now, the episode you're about to watch is a very, very, very important episode. I have saved it for weeks and weeks on end because I've been waiting for the right moment to actually release it. The reason why this episode is so important is it is the very first episode that we filmed when we started this podcast. And right after we filmed it, it was basically a masterclass to me and the rest of our team that we decided to save it and implement every single thing that we learned from that episode. So when you listen to it, when you watch it, wherever you are, I want you to know that this is a masterclass that has helped us. And I definitely know that if you take it and you apply it, it is also going to help you. This is Sam Kim Klongo, full love and respect for her. I can't wait for you guys to listen in. Enjoy. How important is packaging and how do we start doing it sometimes even when we don't have a big budget? Don't overthink. Mm. We're all building as we fly. We're all refining as we go. Yeah. How do you begin to develop a, a, a great stage presence? On stage, we're putting on a show. Yeah. But there must be something that says I'm big on that stage, yeah. right? One of the rules of public speaking is that if you are taking more than two steps at a time, you're not in control of your body. Miss Samkem Shango. Thank you so much for joining us on the Resonate podcast. It's such an honor to have you. And I want to tell you a little story about how I met you, not how we met. <laughs> is um, I was attending Suits and Sneakers odd years ago. Um, I think it was one of their first few ones at a big venue. I think it was at Yamaha. And you were one of the speakers there. And I remember you took the stage. I think you were the only female speaker, actually, if I'm not mistaken. You're one of the speakers there, and you spoke so well. And the moment you walked off the stage, I say to the person that I had attended the event with, she is a remarkable speaker. I was gobsmacked. I was just taken away by how great you were. What do you think makes you such a phenomenal international speaker? I speak in a way that what I'm saying is what I would want to hear. Mm. So number one, it's about understanding my audience always. So the way I spoke at Suits and Sneakers will be very different to the way I'd speak to a business audience. It's very different to the way I speak when I'm doing women and, women's empowerment events. And so I recognize and realize that I <laughs> have very many facets to me. And so I think to myself that people have very many facets to them. Mm -hmm. And depending on the environment, there's a specific side to them that they want you to speak to at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So the example I like using is that the same person on LinkedIn is looking for different content to when they're on Instagram. You know? I love that. Yes. So you can be speaking to the same person, mm -hmm. but depending on the environment and what they're looking for at the time, if you meet them at the point of what they're looking for mm -hmm. and needing to hear, mm -hmm. then you'll have people say, you're a good speaker. Not everyone will say so, by the way. And I'm not afraid of being divisive. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have moved people mm -hmm. from a point of who is she to either I hate her or I absolutely love her than to be forgettable. That's interesting. And I think my follow-up question would be, how do we do that? Because I've watched you speak at a tech event, and the next week you'll be speaking at a different industry event, and you just kill it every single time. What do people need to do to actually be able to speak to the LinkedIn person, speak to the Instagram person, speak to the Twitter person? Research. Hmm. So before I get on stage, I will always ask who's in the room, and... Beyond that, what is their pain point? Because if I get off stage and I haven't either saved you something or given you something, so saved you pain or given you joy, saved you money or given you money. So I'm yeah. either saving you something or I'm giving you something. You are giving a business masterclass already. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, so yes. if I haven't, if there's no before and after, hmm. when I do my coaching, I always ask my clients, what is the after you are looking for in these three sessions we have together. Oh, I love that. So that I know that in these three sessions we have together, I am finding the quickest, most efficient, most impactful route to your mm. after. The desired result. Correct. 
too many of us are putting out content with no before and after for our audience. Yeah. Too many of us are getting behind a microphone with no before and after for our audience. And by the way, gossip has a before and after. It's got entertainment and escapism. Mm -hmm. I was stressed when I listened to, when I logged on to this podcast. And now all of a sudden I'm happy because I realize everybody else's life is so beep. Yeah. I understand, mm -hmm. but there must be a before and after. Mm -hmm. Whether at that before and after is in 90 seconds or in 90 days. Mm -hmm. Be clear on the after your audience is looking for, your sure. client is looking for, mm -hmm. your followers are looking for, mm -hmm. not what some girl feels like saying. Sure. So that's being people focused more than anything. You have to start with your audience. Mm -hmm. You have to start with the listener. Mm. Because then if you are not putting out that content for your follower or putting together that solution for your client, go do it in your shower. Go podcast in your shower. <laughs> I love that. I love that so <laughs> If it's much. about you, yes. then go do it for yourself. Continue. Don't let me stop you, but in your shower. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Um, you know, one of the things that I've seen you do so well every time you do a speaking engagement is you kill it. Like even now we invited you to this podcast and you look amazing thank you You look absolutely amazing talk to us about packaging because that's something that's so important packaging yourself as a speaker and i ask this because i know you are literally a global coach and you have lots of clients across the world that you coach and talk to and you teach these things and i'm hoping that you can impart some of these um, tips and tools to the community how important is packaging packaging and how do we start doing it sometimes even when we don't have the big budget Look, um, the royal family, <laughs> the British royal family, mm -hmm. has a rule that they wear one color at a time. Hmm. So yeah. if you want to appear classy on a budget, stick to a single color. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If you go through my Instagram, actually, yes. you'll notice that I usually am wearing one color at yes. a time. And most oh. of my clothes are from Fushini, Mr. Price... Zara, if the money is flowing nicely, mm. H&M. So I'm not even dressing at these fancy places or from expensive designers. And mm. because we live in the world of social media and my demographic mm. on social media is 25 to 45, aspirational. Yes. I have to be in the fast fashion, always looking fresh, you know, type of packaging. Yes. So I'm not going to go spend a 5,000 5, rand on a dress that I know after people have seen her three times, they're like, girl, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so You understand? So I'm very realistic about the fact that, you know, even this dress today, mm. 900 bucks. Oh, wow. Right? 900 rand from YDE. This was a, a 200 rand at Musa's, my little sequin mm -hmm. turban. And again, for me, it was... You know, I asked you, what color is your wall? Mm. Because I was already thinking about the end product. Mm. When mm. someone sees that thumbnail on YouTube or wherever else you're going to be posting this, what's going to make them want to click on it? Ooh. So before they've even heard what I have to say, they're going to look at me. And depending on the visuals, they're either going to be positively or negatively stimulated. 100%. Before they even hear anything yes. that they have to say. Mom Felicia Mabuza, a great mentor slash mom to me, always says when it comes to women, society first looks at you, then decides if they're going to listen to you. Mm. With men, they'll listen to you, then decide, oh, actually, he's kind of handsome. <laughs> and it's almost like the And more... it doesn't even matter whether he's handsome. It's just like, that is a powerful yes. man. That's just like, because we've listened and we're just like, Girl, okay, he's handsome. Did you hear that man? <laughs> hear that voice. You understand? Yeah. But with the woman, as you're walking up onto stage, it's like, yeah. she can't even walk in those heels. Mm. That skirt is too tight for her. Yeah. Why is her hair like that? Mm. And you've already decided whether you're pulling out your phone mm. and switching off or whether you're going to listen to her. So with me, before I go on stage, I'm so cognizant of the packaging. I'm yes. so cognizant even, you know, when I'm filming for Instagram or now with this podcast that when people see that thumbnail, what is it going to do to them? Mm. And yellow yeah. is such a happy color. Yes. But at the same time, it's a color that you can easily get wrong if your outfit is not matching well or going well with the yellow. And mm. I, I don't know, there's something with my eye, I'm very visually inclined. Mm. Like texts, fonts, certain things irritate me. Yeah. Right? And if they're irritating me from a color perspective, there's color psychology as well. Mm. Right? There's text psychology. There's text hierarchy in graphic design. Yeah. People will be putting a cover image any which way, not knowing there's text hierarchy. Yes. You know, there's this meme going around where 
uh, it says you're going to read this first and it's the biggest font. Then it says, then yes. this, because it's the second biggest font oh, and yes. this last and it's yeah. the tiniest font. I mm. mean, we, we do it subconsciously as human beings. That's true. We are sub- we, we've got our conscious and our subconscious. So when you mm. package yourself, you want to be speaking to the conscious and the subconscious. Mm. Because if you're not, if, if the subconscious rules you out before the conscious has said, let me give her a chance, yeah. it's too late. To, it, it takes longer to win someone back Ooh. than to retain them because you've already got them. Ooh. I love that. I love that so much. It's even speaking to me. Do you think that there's a certain science, especially for women um, that speak, there's a certain science in how they look and how they dress to not do too much? Because if you supposedly look too attractive, people might kind of shut down before they hear you speak. Based on the audience. Ah. Definitely based on the audience. Interesting. If you're going to a women's event, show mm-hmm. up and show out, honey. Mm-hmm. Okay, make sure the person sitting behind you cannot <laughs> see the stage because your hair is so big. Like, I love that. go to town. Yeah. But if you are speaking to a business audience, for instance, mm-hmm. just think to yourself, what would the dress code in this organization be? Mm-hmm. If I were walking into a boardroom, would I want to be dressed as such? You know? And uh, another trick that I give my speaking clients, because I do coaching on public speaking as well, um, especially the women, I say to that, guys, the voice I speak to my man in, it's not the voice I speak in when, when I'm behind the microphone, whether yeah. it be a radio mic, podcast mic, or even my phone microphone, because I am doing content for Instagram. So here you'll hear that there's a bit of a baritone, there's a bit of a bass yes. to my voice. Mm-hmm. And when you're doing anything auditory, or even how your voice is translated by the sound synthesizers, whatever it is, yeah. <laughs> the technology, <laughs> yes. when your voice is deeper, it comes across mm. clearer, it comes across as having authority and it's a voice you can listen to for a long time. Whereas if I was speaking like this, which is how I speak to my man, after 30 seconds, you'd be like, oh my God, yeah, skip. 100%. So there's a science to everything. That's really what I'm getting. There is yeah. a science to yeah. everything and just start. Mm. You learn by doing. I've mm-hmm. learned, I have never had formal public speaking training. Mm. Um, I've learned on the job and I used to dream of being a CNN money presenter. Wow. So I used to watch, especially when I was still finance, some day I would watch yes. those, uh, presenters. There mm-hmm. was a time that Zane Asher was presenting and I was Ooh. like, I love her. I love the way she speaks. I'd enunciate with like her. Yeah. And it took a while for me to find my voice. Mm. So there was a time when I was doing Metro FM back in 2018, my first um, like resident radio segment. And I mean, I listened back to some of those voice <laughs> notes. I'm like, what were you doing? Were you trying oh to be born? I was like, and in today's story. <laughs> but then you find yourself, you find your voice. Mm. And so just start, have it in your mind that, okay, I know that there's a broad broadcast voice. Mm. You know, I'll play around until I find the one that resonates with me. Yes. You know, oh, resonates. I resonates. love that. <laughs> I know, like I did that. Yeah. So it's that. it's it's about just starting. Don't overthink. Mm. We're all building as we fly. We're all refining as we go. Yeah. And um, overcoming the fear of being wrong, mm. overcoming the fear of not being as good as people already think you are, overcoming the fear of perhaps finding yourself in a position where you're going to have to apologize for a faux pas. Um, first of all, it takes grace because you need to have grace with yourself to say, I actually deserve a second chance Mm. and a third and a fourth. Mm. So it takes grace first and foremost, and then it takes humility. Yeah. Because once you acknowledge that the journey and the process is actually all there is to it. Sure. You know, you never really want to arrive. I I can't imagine anything more boring than having arrived. That's true. But the journey of always striving to be better than yesterday, than last year, you know, for me is that's where Mm. the joy is. The, 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 the process of figuring things out of proving something wrong. Yeah. I reward myself even for things that go wrong. Cause like, well, now we know that doesn't work. (laughs) Well done, Sam. Sam. Yeah. Um, those are the ingredients for then being able to hone your craft, Mm. uh, using both learned skills acquired skills or even coaching yeah 
Mm. Right? What you, the skills you receive from coaching. There's also a lot to be said by learning as you do. Mm. Mm-hmm. I love that so much. I was saying this to a friend of mine in the week and I was like, high achievers never arrive. Because even after you've arrived, you feel like, okay, well, what's next? And you want to start working on something else, which is such a true testament to just enjoying the process and mm-hmm. finding yourself in the process. Now, you coach very important people. <laughs> and uh, you have coached me in more ways than you even realize as far as my speaking is concerned. And there's something so powerful that you taught me, changed my life. It even changed my rate card, to which we'll get to later. <laughs> Love it. Um, And one of those things was stage presence. I I would like you to take us through how do you begin to develop as somebody who's starting to speak? How do you begin to develop a a, a great stage presence that consistently draws attention in the moment that you're speaking? You are drawing attention through all the senses, Mm. right? So when people see you, that's how you're drawing attention. When I go on stage, as much as there'd be specific protocols and dress codes, you want to be a little bit costumey. You Mm. want to be seen. So one of the things that I love wearing when I'm going on stage is power shoulders. Because it makes me look bigger than I really am, or big hair. Yes. So there must be something that says I'm big on that stage, right? From a visual perspective. And, you know, professional makeup, beat for the gods, honey. Like... (laughs) I'm a minimalist girl. I don't believe uh, uh, you're on stage. We're putting on a show. Yes. So let's make sure we've got all our ingredients. So it starts with the packaging. It starts with the packaging. It starts with the visual hook, Mm. which is how do you look? Do I enjoy looking at you? Mm. And more than enjoy, am I I fascinated? Am I thinking, oh, I love the way she's done that. That green against her skin. I wonder where she's from. How does she maintain that figure? So, because people have short attention spans. That's very true. So you want to be hooking them using their different senses. So number one is the visual hook that will allow you to have stage presence. And the way you're packaged, but also the way you're moving across the stage. One of the rules of public speaking is that if you are taking more than two steps at a time, you're not in control of your body. So you want to take one, two, and pause to make your point. Okay. Stay here for a little bit. Then one, two... And pause to make your point. Because stay here. Body language it. actually does speak. No, you can't be doing your ten thousand steps on stage. Because wow. immediately, <laughs> immediately, as someone who's a professional speaker and someone mm-hmm. who speaks on the science of speaking mm-hmm. or coaches on the science of speaking, I already know that if you're taking more than two steps at a time, you're not in control of your body. You're nervous, and therefore, I'm going to lose trust and faith in what you're saying. Oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! That is such a game changer because it's like, it's usually in the small little things that you can change. Correct. And that you can do. Correct. Of course, if you're asking a question and you're walking from one end of the stage to the other to go point at someone or hear them closer, that's different. Yes. But if you're just pacing aimlessly or if your pacing isn't rhythmic Mm. and rhythmic in line with what you're saying, you're nervous. I see. Yes. You're not, you you haven't mastered your content. Mm. And take us through tone of voice because I have seen you go smooth and I've seen you go big mama on yes. a stage yes <laughs> and I have seen you go very serious yes what determines that um so that is the vocal hook now okay. so now I'm appealing to your um auditory senses all right right using pace if I am trying to invoke a sense of urgency in you then all of a sudden I'm going to pick up the pace and I'm going to speak fast I'm going to let you know that this is what you stand to lose if you don't get this done right now Right? So even if you're looking at your phone, all of a sudden you're going to be like, wait, what? What's happening? Yes. You understand? But if I am trying to be empathetic Mm. or trying to reflect that as the organization or the who I'm representing on the stage, we care, then I'll definitely go slower. Mm. Then I'll also definitely change the tone of my voice to make it more nurturing. Yes. Right? But if I am here to deliver hard-hitting facts or maybe we are presenting the data year-end review of an organization, again, that's different. Yes. Then I'm going to put on more of my CNN money voice. Yes. <laughs> but if I am like, sis, you need to get up. Yeah. Get up. Yeah. You know, then I'll be speaking like I'm speaking to my friend. Mm. Like, get over that. I am not having another conversation about this man. <laughs> Do you hear me? You understand? So you yes. speak with your pace, your tone. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's deeper. Sometimes it's softer. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's faster. Sometimes it's slower. Now I am appealing to your hearing. My stage mm-hmm. presence 
is being hooked by you liking what you hear. Mm-hmm. And I'm also not being monotone because I'm going to put you to sleep. So I need to take you on a bit of a roller coaster with my words so that I keep you engaged, I keep you awake, I keep you enjoying the ride. Interesting. Yes. And I, and I also keep the suspense. Because mm. if my address to you is suspenseful, then all of a sudden I've got you at the edge of your seat. Yeah. And by the end, you're so excited from the mm. adrenaline rush. That was thrilling. I want some more. Oh, that's nice. I like that. And I mean, what I've also always seen is that when people come to the events, they already know who's speaking. So the moment you walk in the door to take your seat, even before you actually speak, they're already checking you out. Yes. So I'd imagine how you even carrying yourself through that whole moment before you called up stage becomes very important. 100%. Because I've hosted events before where we would have speakers come, but you find like the speakers on their phone the entire time or the speakers just doesn't seem quite interested in the event until they're called up to speak. What do you do, like what would be best practice to kind of carry yourself if you're invited at an event to come and speak? Look, um, I think there's different ways of handling that. I know, for instance, that I don't like hearing other speakers before me. It makes me nervous. Because then I start comparing my address to them. Mm. And not always in a positive, very rarely in a positive light. It's like, oh, you should have done that. Oh, I love the way you... So it scares me to no end. If I'm emceeing, it's different. But if I am one of the speakers, one of the program speakers, then it makes me so nervous. And I would rather not be in the room at all. Mm. Yes, I'd rather not be in the room at all. That's interesting because I am of the opposite. So I want to hear everybody that's speaking when I'm speaking at an event because I'm trying to find out how I can loop what I am about to talk about to support the other speakers that are speaking so we can achieve the same purpose for the event. I'm not trying to loop anyone. I've got my message. I'm here to deliver my (laughs) message. Whether we loop or we don't, that's that's on God. (laughs) That's on God. I love that. I love that so much. So... Take us through, you You shared with me something that was so powerful, and I'm going to release all the juices here because I get the best of them. And you you, you shared with me something along the lines of uh, one of a spiritual teacher that shared with you a skill or rather, um, I don't know what to even call it, but how to get people to get on their feet before you actually get on stage and what that does to people. Can you just please take the audience through that? Because I that, that, that was a game changer for me. <laughs> All right. So most people will, if, well, rather, most of the speaking engagements that I've done recently, I have people rise to their feet before I give my address. Mm-hmm. And she said, Samke, you need to honor yourself and your message mm-hmm. that you're about to deliver. When there's a mayor coming to speak when there's the keynote speaker when there's oprah you know they'll say and now let's stand and give a warm welcome to so she said if they're not doing that for you that's okay but you need to do it for yourself Hmm. and how you do it for yourself is that um uh, lately i've been introduced with the song so i invite everyone to get up and dance with me um but in my last engagement last week um i was speaking at a business forum and i started off with an exercise where i mm. asked everyone to rise to their feet and i was doing a i was illustrating a marketing point how flawed traditional um marketing research methods are and why we should rely on the data that comes through from constantly engaging your, your audience and your community yes. so i said everyone please rise to your feet i'm going to ask you three questions if they uh, apply to you remain standing if they don't apply sit down so that was my way of having people rise to their feet when i get on stage so i don't want to get on stage of again if i'm an mc different but if i'm yes. coming to deliver a keynote or i'm one of the main program speakers then I honor myself and my gift and spiritually you are then saying what I'm carrying or what I'm about about to deliver is of value. Mm. I recognize that as the custodian of the message, as the custodian of the gift. I am not the gift. I'm the custodian of the gift. Mm. I I am not Sam Kim Tlongo. I'm an employee of brand Sam Kim Tlongo. Mm. That's why I have, I'm accountable to myself. Yeah. Why did we say yes to that opportunity? Why did we say no? Mm-hmm. Why did you allow Brand Sam Kim Shlongo to show up at this event looking like yeah. this and not like that? And so once you try to start treating your gift, your brand as your employer or as a third party responsible to, all of a sudden you're way more careful with it. Sure. That is so interesting. That is so powerful. I feel like you keep dropping the mic every time. <laughs> Like and shaking the tables. What do you do to invest in yourself? I uh, get a lot of coaching myself. So I pay for a lot of coaching uh, myself. 
uh, physical health. I eat very well. I'm on an 80-20 vegan journey. I'm trying to be 80% plant-based. Um, I plan ahead, but not plan ahead like oh, in five years, no, as in tomorrow, I can tell you at 11 yes. where I'm going to be, what I'm going to be doing. Yeah. And I give, my, because I now work with myself. Mm. I used to work against myself. What do I mean? I recently discovered that um, I display the symptoms of ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So I get bored very quickly. And okay. not in a cute, like Rihanna, like, oh, I get bored quickly. So now I've got a fashion empire. So, no, I get bored before it's even harvest time. Oh, wow. You know, and I've cheated myself a lot but I didn't know that my brain is not firing as it should. Mm -hmm. And so when I've been researching ADHD and the traits and the behaviors, now I know that my brain wants, can focus on something only for about 20, 30 minutes, and then it must take a break or go to something else. Mm -hmm. And so I buffer that. I work in sprints. I'm a sprinter. I'm not a marathon runner. Oh, and so I break up my day into sprints. And so I'm giving myself dopamine fixes. Mm -hmm. Now I'm working on this proposal and now I'm going to take a break to phone my coaching community client. And then I'm going to come back to the proposal for 30 minutes and then I'm going to take a break and order my meal. And then I'm going to come back to this proposal and then I'm going to take a break. But now I've planned the break. So I'm not feeling guilty that I've mm -hmm. taken the break. I'm not having a panic attack or an anxiety attack that I'd given myself a two hour block. I can't work in two hour blocks. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And also what I've realized is that According to my menstrual cycle, it also dictates how logical I think or how creatively I think. That's interesting. I know that for the first three days of my cycle, I'm not going into the office. Mm. I'm working in my pajamas. You cannot get me out of my house. Mm. And so I plan around that. I know when my cycle is coming, I'm like, okay, cool. I need to have low intensity activities at that time. Interesting. Yes. And then I know that, all right, 10, 15 days after my cycle is when I'm most logical. That's when I'm doing my proposals. Mm. So I work with me. Yourself. I love that. And you know, when you say work with yourself, I, I, I have found myself in like this whole schlep where when you're trying to develop yourself, you read the 5 a.m. club and you're like, great, I now need to be like a 5 a.m. person. And then you hear this thing that works, you're like, great, I now need to do And I think for me, my greatest turning point into like everything I enjoy now is just working with myself and realizing that maybe I don't do well with like spending three hours in the morning working out and doing like other stuff. I'm a sprinter. So like from the moment I get up, I need a, I want a couple of hours to get work done. And then I can do all the lazy stuff like later in the day. But my first morning energy has to be very intensive. And it's been such a journey working through that. I want to also get into something that you and I talk a lot about. And I see you also talk a lot about it on Twa, which I want to hear more about after this. And that's pricing. <laughs> <laughs> the big P word. Yes. Pricing. What are the strategies to price yourself as a speaker? I get this question uh, quite a lot. And I'll first of all maybe say that my journey was quite different because when I started speaking, I got companies who were saying, this is how much we're paying everyone. So they were mm. like, this is the budget and this is how much every speaker is getting paid. Does this fall within your budget? And I was like, um, okay, yes. <laughs> clearly, if you say so. Yeah. And then that was my rate and then I built from there over the years. But for somebody who hasn't gotten that request and they are a startup and they've taken all the notes, how do they begin to price themselves? I would say you want to do a number of speaking engagements for free. Mm. First of all, to understand which audience you resonate the most with, okay. to understand your delivery style, to understand um, where, where you're going to play, because that's going to determine your price. So once you know where you're playing, you can then start looking at what are other people charging? Mm. And it's not as it's it's easier said than done because a lot of speakers won't tell you what they're charging. Of course. So you need to have an element of vulnerability. I used to say to my clients, to be honest with you, I don't know how much I should charge for this. Mm. Can you please guide me? I like that. And then they will tell me. Mm. And then then I will take that price and try it with the next person. Or I'll say, What's your budget? And they'll say, The budget is 30K. I'm like, oh, 30, 25, let's go. The price Maybe is now 30. 30K. You understand? I love Until you get pushed back. Yes. So you keep climbing. Yes. So like try keep pushing the envelope. Now it's gonna be 32 and a half, now it's yes. gonna be 35. Until they're yeah. like, oh sorry, that's out of our budget. And you come back. Yeah. And you come back and you yeah. go forward again and you come back. So um like now I said no to a request for um eighteen thousand Rand for an hour. Mm. 
Mm. Because to some people, that's like in January, you're saying no to 18,000 rand for an hour. Um, the, the budget of the speaker tells you the budget of the event. Mm. And the caliber of people that will be there. And so on and so forth. Yeah. And with how much I've invested into my brand in terms of the time, the expertise, the profile, mm. You know, name a TV station I haven't been on, name a radio station I haven't been on. I've written, I wrote for a publication, a magazine column for four years. I'm a best-selling author. I've pick, pick a country. Okay, no, don't pick a country. That's very, very <laughs> ambitious. But Nigeria I've a spoken platform. at, USA I've spoken in, Europe I've spoken in, you understand? Mm -hmm. um, and so now I'm able to push back to preserve the brand mm -hmm. because that same organization, they book you for 18,000, they're not looking at you when they've got 50,000 for a speaker. One Because they've boxed you into the 18,000 category yeah. and they've boxed you into the middle of the month event where it's internal and there's 20 people. Yeah, and it's last minute. Correct. And I also don't do events where anyone will do. Mm. We're just looking for a speaker. Keep looking, babes. Mm. But if you're like, we're looking for a phenomenal woman who can speak on X and will re refer to you. Now we're talking. Because also if anyone will do, they'll also treat you like you're anyone when you get there. And it just shows that they've done the research around what they want. And if they're saying that they want some gate, it means that they've got certain objectives that they want to meet based on the speaker they want. Job is already half done because they yeah. have they have determined and they know that what Samke speaks on, what Samke does is what we're looking for. Mm. So already they have defined to me that they know the problem they have, I already solve. I don't have to be nervous. I don't have, now I can just come on stage and flex. Yes. But I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I really, really do. So as a person that's probably starting out or they've been doing a, a bit of speaking engagements here and there, how do you market yourself to be a, a, a known speaker? So um, a, booked, a booked and busy speaker gives the perception that they're in demand. So have a minimum number of speaking engagements you want to be seen at every month, okay. and you're profiling that on your social media, mm. right? Yeah. So everywhere, even if you're going for free, honey, there have been times back in the day where I'd even stand behind the podium I wasn't even speaking. And oh, I'll just wow. get my photo up because I'm like, I need at least four engagements this month. Framing. Yes, perception management. Yes. So do that. Uh, put yourself out there. Look, look at other speakers that you're emulating. Mm -hmm. Look at where they've spoken. If you can see, this person is doing the spa conference this year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to message, email them and say, hello, spa. I saw that you, ho you hosted a sales conference in March. Do you know that I'm a sales speaker? Can I be your speaker for next year? Mm. So follow the people that you, you're emulating or who speak in your industry. Then propose yourself to those organizations that booked them. I love that. Because most of these events are annual. They happen every year. Like clockwork. But the speaking for free is such a, a great tool because I know it helped me develop my confidence. It helped me oh, yeah. learn how to storytell, which is another question I have for you. Um, when you speak, one of the things, like you even mentioned, the tone and all those things, I believe they go hand in hand with storytelling, right? What are the components that you think fit or are very resourceful to creating a story arc when you're about to speak on stage? Because like you said, you want to keep them captivated from the beginning all the way until they're done. How do we do that in our storytelling? I mean, there are several methods, right? Number one is don't read from a script unless you're giving scientific research report, right? Yes. What I always tell my speaking clients is have a, just like an Uber, have a beginning point, have an end point. And the minute you, even Waze or Google Maps, the minute you say this is my end destination, it gives you like four or five routes. Mm. And too many people are married to the route instead of being married to the destination. Ah. So if there's traffic on this destination, you've, you've made an example, you can see that it's not landing with this audience. When you know your destination, you can detour, you can off-ramp. But now when you're married to the route, you're sitting in traffic. Yeah. These examples aren't making sense. You're making <laughs> jokes that people aren't laughing at. You are now even starting to be a little bit controversial because you're trying get, to get people to react, and now you end up being making a fool of yourself. So you need to have just, this is my starting point, this is my end point. What are the different markers? Mm. Three, three main markers. Like, I will go in knowing, okay, I know I'm going to want to talk about 
females being independent. Depending on the room, I can either talk about my journey of divorce, my journey of being raised by a, a, a grandmother who was a matriarch and the breadwinner, my journey of rebuilding. I've got different routes I can take. The route doesn't matter. It's the takeaway that matters. So that is number one in terms of storytelling. Don't be married to the script. Just be married to the end goal and have an idea in your head of what are some of the examples you can pull to illustrate that end goal. Number two, decide for yourself what your style is, your storytelling style. What do I mean? Are you going to start with, you're probably wondering how I am Sam Kim Thonga, international speaker who lives between Johannesburg and Atlanta. Well, let me tell you, then I flash back. So I can start today and flash back. Yes. I can start chronologically. I grew up in, which unless you are Michelle Obama, don't bore us. Start with the juice. <laughs> you yes. understand? Yeah. Or I can start at the arc. There I was, 2014, broke, tired, and wondering, how am I going to afford to leave this man when I can't even afford to pay the rent by myself? Well, let me tell you. So you understand, there's, there's a science to it. Yeah. But now you want to start with, uh, welcome everybody, give yourselves a round of applause, you look so good, Lala, I know. I wouldn't have stepped out of my house. <laughs> I love that. You understand? I love that. Cut to Got the you. chase. Yes. Got Cut you. to the chase. So have a, a hook when you get on stage. Mm. Right? Have a hook. Um, it takes some time to finesse. So maybe what some people do is if they're nervous when they get on stage, they'll do a little bit of icebreaker, mm -hmm. right? Okay, clap for hands, greet your neighbor and say they're working through the nerves. That's okay. Yeah. But then quickly get into your hook. Mm -hmm. Quickly tell me why I want to listen to what you have to say. Yeah? Yeah. That is so powerful. That's like million dollar information you're sharing with us. Um, I love that so much because even when you speak, I'm thinking to myself, one of my best practices to storytelling is I watch movies just to see how writers write and how they tell stories, especially the movies that I resonate with and that I like, yeah. which I find very a, a lot of inspiration in. So now when we build the story and we are talking to a specific audience about something, yeah. what do we do when we're done? So what I have noticed is people are usually in a hurry yeah. to finish so they end up sharing the end point in the middle or in the beginning and then continuously giving examples until their time on stage is, is up. And then one of the biggest mistakes I've also seen is like when they're done speaking, it's, yeah, thank you, that was me for the day, and then they walk off stage. What would be best practice to like get a great walk off? I'm going to give you three things okay. that you must absolutely take away if you didn't hear anything else from the past 20 minutes I've been on stage. Number three, countdown always works well. Mm -hmm. And number one, the number one way to make sure or the number one tactic you need to have, and I hope everybody's listening and taking notes, the number one is that you must start with your audience. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sam Gimshlam. It's been an absolute pleasure. Goodbye, God bless, good afternoon, and Godspeed. Then I do a little bow and I go. So you can't be, that's me, because then it means people are just like, oh, you need to, to end here. Yes. You understand? Yeah. You, they need to be basically hungry for me. Like, oh my God, no, she cannot. Yeah. And um, you can have a little signature uh, send off for yourself. I have done, I mean, 2018, I, I did do a, uh, okay, that's me. Thank you. I got a standing ovation. I mean, the content was great, yes. but I was just so nervous. Mm -hmm. Now I'm able to wrap it up nicely. You know, again, I would have understood who the audience is. And then I'm able to, you know, sometimes it's even, um, I'd like to now open up for questions. And even after doing questions, like, don't just say, oh, there's no more questions. Okay, then thanks, guys. No. Very awkward. Just be like, all right, before I get off stage, I want to leave you with this. Mm. You know, so always be in control of the narrative and always make sure that you're ending, you know, even yeah. vocally on a high. Mm. Imagine almost a plane, you're ending on the takeoff. I love that so much. So, so much. Tell us about Twa, your baby. I've been so privileged to attend a couple of masterclasses mm. that Twa has done that has really also changed the course of how we do business at that. Resonate. Um, tell us a little bit more about Twa and how do we benefit from Twa? Where do we find it? But I think more the meat because it's such a valuable platform. 
Yes. So Twa Inc. Twa is actually a technology company, right? We've got a technology. It's a technology company that's built a platform where you monetize your skills. So imagine social media with the explicit intention of making money for you, the content creator, the community builder. Let me give you an example. You are a life coach and you've got a coaching community that you house on Twa. The subscription fees are collected within Twa. You set the subscription fees and all your content is then housed within this community. You also have the, the option of putting the content on the normal timeline so that you are mm-hmm. fishing for members. Oh, I resonate with that now. I want to join the community. Everything happens right on here. Live stream functionality, instead of saying, guys, we are on live. Come join, please. (laughs) You're live streaming directly to your audience. All that functionality. Yeah. It was originally launched in 2021 by Irene Kiwia, who is a mentor, friend, everything. Um, And she'd originally launched it as a mentorship platform. But what I realized and what she realized as well is that As a mentorship platform, mentors aren't in the business of mentorship. They're in the business of business. Mm -hmm. And so you've got some very high-profile women that have communities on there, but the activity has died down because they have to focus on their business. So when I joined in May 2023, the strategic redirection that I came in with is that I am not a mentor explicitly. Like, I don't have a mentorship community. But I have a lot of people that I coach. And I have a lot of people that I uh, give mentorship to uh, freely and also in a paid way. Why don't we then, instead of saying we're looking for these high profile mentors, why don't we say we're looking for people who have content and skills that other people are interested in, that other people would pay for? So now all of a sudden you're act- adding direct value. It's niche value. I know I'm coming to Michelle for sales. I'm not coming to Michelle to tell me about, you know, mm-hmm. how to navigate marriage. Yes. You're doing it well, yep. but that's not what I need right now. Mm-hmm. It's niche, it's focused, and I'm paying a subscription fee. And when I'm paying a subscription fee, there's also an obligation on you to deliver. Mm. Right? The minute you bring money in, there's a formality that comes to it. That's true. So I said, okay, before I go in and redesign this platform and go and acquire all these community builders, I myself first need to become a community builder of a paid group. Mm. So that I understand the pain points, I understand the friction, I understand what our competitors are doing. And where the gaps are so that at least we know where we're going to play mm-hmm. and more importantly what i discovered which i hadn't realized is that a lot of the solutions for subscription communities digital communities are western and it's easy for them to take subscriptions via credit card 100 percent. in africa i've got zimbabwean members where i have to use my ex-husband's cousin who's got eco cash to collect the eco cash because they use us dollars yeah then buy the eco cash voucher then send to her then she sends to me same as in kenya where they use mpesa i don't have you understand so it said to us how are we going to address if we are an african solution built for african problems Mm -hmm. how are we going to address the very fragmented payment system in, in, in Africa, you know, do you just say everyone pays an annual fee? Uh, there's the trust deficit. I'm not going to pay a year's worth of subscriptions to someone I haven't even decided to like them or not. Yeah. And so how do you then solve for that? Um, and yeah, that's the coaching community. We basically coach people wanting to build digital communities. Yeah. We say we coach coaches and aspiring coaches. And this is not, oh, I am a commencer, registered, certified coach. No, 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 no. If you've got experience in something... Yes. And experience in helping people overcome that challenge, Mm -hmm. you're coaching them in that, Mm -hmm. you know. So it's not some fancy, no, every one of us has a challenge we've overcome, has something we know how to do. Even if it is, I will teach you how to make the best pop you've ever tasted in your life. Don't be scared. (laughs) But let me tell you something. You understand? So even if you are, I'm going to help you zhuzh up. I'm the African. Lazy Magodi. I love her as an example. I'm the African food queen. You don't need to be a chef. Mm. You know, many people are self-taught. I'm a self-taught makeup artist. I'm a self-taught. I'm a speaking coach. I've never received public speaking training. Mm. I've never, I don't have a public speaking coaching certification. And so don't get bogged down at, oh, but was there an exam I need to write? No, 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 no. Of course, uh, we're putting into place certain verifications to make sure that actually you can do what you say you do. And uh, more than that, we give you the practical skills and tools, Mm -hmm. the technology you need, many chat automations, chatbot, your newsletter. Do you use MailChimp, Constant Contact, or Flowdesk? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you manage people that haven't paid? How do you even save? 
there's a, a way to save people's numbers. We currently have a community on WhatsApp for you to know who's who. So wow. if you are a client that pays in full at, at the beginning of every quarter, you've got a diamond next to your name as well as the country flag you're from. If you pay 50-50, you've got a medal. If you're a staff member and admin, you've got a ticket. So now I can look at my phone when I get a message. I'm like, ah, medal. She can wait an hour or two. <laughs> diamond. Sorry, Michelle, I've got to take yeah. You understand? So little tricks and tips yeah. to help you. Of course, now on the platform, we'd want to have a way where that technology is built in so you know what grading this member is. Of course. Right? But we won't know to do that if we haven't encountered the challenge or the benefit mm. of having that or the challenge when it comes to not having that, not knowing who's who in the community. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing I'd also add as to is that it gives you access to a global community. Oh, yeah. Because there's a lot of women from all over the world that you can yes. transact with, connect with, and also just partner with when you're doing stuff. Yes. A lot of our members actually buy from each other. So I've got Dr. Mandy uh, Sigal K, she bought a Canva masterclass from uh, Shaz. She bought a LinkedIn branding masterclass from Tinora in Zimbabwe. Nice. Um, I've, she's, she's bought public speaking coaching from me. I bought a money boot camp from Ufense. Yes. Um, but you understand? So a lot yeah. of us patronize each other. And yeah. these women are from, we've got Alia from India. We've got Yelkai from Australia. We've got Lucia from Germany. We've got a lot of Zimbabwean, Kenyan, Tanzanian, Nigerian, American members, uh, UK. Yeah. Uh, we've got Noni and uh, Hoizi from the UK. So it's a lot of women in Africa and in the diaspora. Yeah. And it is just amazing what they learn from each other. Yeah. We even had Secret Santa this past December because oh, nice. a lot of our uh, members are away from their families. Yeah. So just having that sense of community. We've got Wellness Wednesdays now because we realized as a community builder, as a coach, as the strong one or the one with all the answers, it's sometimes very difficult to reach out and say, I'm feeling burnt out yeah. or I'm just not in the mood or I don't know if this is working anymore. Mm -hmm. So we've got a registered clinical psychologist, Dr. Mwende, who does, um, she's based in Kenya and she does our Wellness Wednesday and she got her first two international clients as a result of TOA. I love that. Yeah, so immediately she can charge a premium rate as well. Mm, I love that. And one of the things that you've said to me quite a long time ago is to encourage me to think global. Yeah. for my business how do we do that um you have to start by building a global network so i hate these solutions of you know you've just got to believe no but belief <laughs> comes from evidence that's true you know one of the sayings that i got from coach offensa is that evidence builds confidence yes so you can't believe it's difficult to believe you can pull an international client unless you've pulled international clients yeah. like Minnie, you can't tell me jack about mm. pulling international clients mm -hmm. i've got receipts baby yeah. you understand yeah and that confidence and that belief comes from the fact that it's been validated yeah and so the first place to start is to build an international network i used to go to conferences galore like i was i met irene my current business partner because i attended a conference in tanzania in 2017 interesting many people want to build a global community but they don't even have a passport Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no shade. Exactly. But even if you don't have a passport, they're international organizations. Yeah. They're expat communities. Yeah. I'm going to an Ethiopian expat community event now in February, mm -hmm. invited by my good friend, Zakaria Samsalu, who I met in New York. He's Ethiopian. He's like, Samke, my friend Dougie is based in Cape Town. She heads up the Ethiopian diaspora community. She's bringing some artists. I think you two should meet Give her a copy of your book. She'll give you some coffee. But you two ladies, I was like, let's go. Yeah. So from that one trip continues to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. From that one trip in New York where I met Zacharias, he's the convener of the Africa FinTech Summit. I've now spoken in Zambia. I've spoken in Cape Town. I've spoken that. in D.C., Washington. Okay. Thanks to Zacharias, that one trip to New York yeah. where, I was busing, where I was training on the subway, staying with a friend in Brooklyn because I only had money for the ticket, but I knew it's an investment. Mm -hmm. And that trip in 2018 is still paying dividends in 2024. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. One of the things that I love a lot about your story as a whole, and I think if anybody hasn't heard about it, it's all on some guest platforms, <laughs> is um, you consistently pushing through regardless. Yeah. You know, and, and I want to I wanna touch on that because every time I see you make moves, I'm just like, damn. 
some case just unstoppable. And yeah. I think there is, I talk to a lot of people and people are just always saying, oh, I'm having trouble with A, B, C, D, and E. And I'll, I'll come back and focus when things are better. Or I will do this when things are now fine. And I think for women mostly, it's like we kind of held back by circumstances that happen in our lives. Mm. And I'd love for you to just chat, chat about how have you been able to still press through and still do what you do in the midst of adversity? I've had times where I'm like, God, I can't take it anymore. Mm. And I always tell people that that is a very dangerous prayer. Because yeah. every time I've said to God, God, I can't go any further, I hand over to you. It, things have shaken. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Sometimes God will be like, hey, that best friend must go. Or that man of yours must go. Oh, my oh, You understand? So be ready for the answer before you ask the question. Yes. <laughs> be ready to give away anything. Yeah, like you need to be yeah. seriously desperate. Um, but more than anything, I, I don't want people thinking that I don't have down days. Mm. Sometimes I have days where I don't want to get out of bed and I don't get out of bed. Yes. Sometimes I have days where I'm like, like now I've got a big proposal to do, a six-figure proposal. And I reached out to one of my contacts and I said to him, I can't do this by myself. Can we partner on it? Mm. So I found it's become easier when I know my limitations. Love I found it's become easier when I say mm. to someone, I, w I know I should get up, but I just can't. Can mm. you help me? Mm. Um, I've, I've, it's just a, a, an inherent love and also a confidence, not a belief. It's a confidence that I can get myself out because I've done so so many times before. Right? So it's a confidence. And, and the thing is, you being able to get up from your troubles comes from how many times you've got out of trouble before. Sure. So a lot of us aren't actually building up the evidence that we can actually save ourselves, that we can actually be creative, that we can actually come up with the solution, that this thing is happening for me, not to me. So a lot of us don't let, we, we, we leave the pot bubbling and we don't wait for the stew to some of us to realize that actually this was the risk this was part of the recipe all along because if you can pull yourself out once you've got enough evidence to know that you can do it again honey when you've when you've no. gone when you've let the story mature yeah right when you've let the testimony mature yeah a lot of people are sitting in the middle of their testimony mm. and they're not letting they're not seeing it through he who started a good thing in you will finish it. Yes. They're, not fin they're not letting God finish the story. Oh, hallelujah. Because a lot of us are glorious in our story. The only reason I'm on these stages is because I went through a Tyler Perry style divorce. I'm, I now say the worst thing I could have gotten from that divorce is what I was asking for. Ooh. It would have paralyzed me. Wow. Wow, I'm getting goosebumps just by hearing that. Because I can think of so many moments in my life where the worst thing that could have happened to me was to get what I wanted in that moment. That's right, honey. Oh my gosh. I, whew, that's a lot. <laughs> that is so much in one sentence. So, so much. Okay, in closing, I want to talk about <laughs> the biggest thing that's currently creating such a huge buzz at the moment for salespeople, entrepreneurs, everybody else, and that's content. Yes. You talk a lot about content. You share so many insights around content creation on the Twa page and on your personal page as yes. well. How do we begin to create content that's global? How do you create content that is global? Define your niche. Mm. People Ooh. are people. Problems are problems. Yeah. Heartbreak. Listen, whether you've been dumped by Barack Obama or Ubabum Kize, the security guard, Espa, pain is pain. You will be crying. Tear. You know, Michelle's not going to be like, bro, yes. why are you crying? He's just a security. Pain is pain. Yep. So when you understand that human beings are human beings, mm -hmm. regardless of their accent, their heritage, and you speak to their problem, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you'll find the universality. Sure. of your solution all right um so define your niche if you haven't defined your niche and take your time defining your niche you're allowed to change your mind try something for three months if it's not working tweak it a bit if it's not working tweak it a bit but yeah. stay in the game a lot of people will try it's not working in three months i haven't got a thousand followers i'm out no finish <laughs> your cooking stay on the stove i love that so much because i can attest to the fact that when i was still 
just talking about entrepreneurship as a whole, yeah. my brand deals were much different until I really niche to sales. Yeah. And now it's like a, a, a FSP would pay me more now because I'm much more niche. Yes. And they understand the value that I bring to the table. Play where you know, number one, I can through my existing gifts mm -hmm. and talents or through acquired gifts and talents, i.e. by doing a short course or a little bit of coaching, I can get to the top 1% in my industry. Number one. Play there. Top 1%. Top 1%. Yeah. If you believe, like, it'll give you a, you may not be when we look statistically, but at least if you're like, ah, in South Africa, when people hear my name, this is what they think. Yeah. Or this is what I want them to think, and I know I can get there. Yeah. Right? So that's number one. Number two, it has to be something you love. Mm. It has to be something you love because that love will take you beyond where other people are willing to go. But passion will get you out the starting blocks. Yeah. Profit will keep you on the journey. Oh, my gosh. Profit. That's a big word. And it's going to make us not end this conversation. If you're not making money, <laughs> I always tell people, if you've worked with me or you're a part of TWA yeah. and you haven't made money in three months, it's you, not us. Mm. So we, you have to monetize quickly. We cannot glorify broke creatives. Yeah. We cannot glorify um, not adding the commercialization yeah. to what you love. I'm currently coaching a healer. Based in LA. She wow. heals through sound therapy. I was like, okay, Lala, how are we going to invoice for this? <laughs> She's like, you know, when people are, I'm like, I love it for you, but yes. how are we? Yeah. I'm not convinced. How are we going to package it? So content, number one, define your niche. And then number two, explain your, the problem, mm. not the solution. Yeah. Explain the problem in the language your audience uses. I love that. In the language they use. Yes. So you can't be a medical doctor saying, if you are having endocrinotic pain in the uh, medulla or blood, no, no, do you get headaches? I see. Simplify. Do you have a dry throat when you wake up in the morning? That, that's me. But now we've got a gut, uh, gut microbiome scientist in the UK. She's a member of TWA. She used to talk about the gut microbiome and how you need to have a healthy gut because of your microbiome, your internal, intestinal flora and fauna, until she said, I can help you lose weight and keep it off. That's the language that they understand. Okay, sis. By healing your microbiome. I don't even know by what anymore. You've just told You yeah. understand? Yeah. Do you know that acne is a result of, your, of, of, of what you're ingesting? What? I can heal your skin through diet. Okay, tell me more. The microbiome. But yeah. now if you're like microbiome and your content has a little green bacteria running, scroll. In fact, mute. Yes. In fact, unfollow. Immediately. I love that so much. So we want to resonate with Samke. And how we resonate with Samke is we'll ask Samke to share us a book, a quote, or just a YouTube channel, a podcast that has meant so much to her and that has really changed her perspective on something what would that be? Well, uh, I have to leave you with a quote. You are what you think, not what you think you are. Ooh, you are what you think, not what you think you are. Yes. Oh my gosh. So when you, when you step onto the stage and the, the thoughts are, I'm so nervous, I'm going to mess this up. That's what you are. Not, oh, I'm a confident girl, this is my stage. So I actually keep a, a note, in my notes app is a, a, a tab called Conversations with Myself where I listen to what I think. Oh my gosh, I love that. You are what you think and not what you think you are. Yes, Napoleon Hill, author of um, Think and Grow Rich. Read the book. I mean, okay, no, don't, no, the book is a bit hectic. No, maybe not, don't read the book. Um, if I were to give you a book to read, a book that's really changed my life, um, What Happened to You? I'm currently reading What Happened to You by Oprah and Dr. Bruce Perry. Oh, so let me tell you, I got that book when it came out. Yeah. I haven't touched it again. It triggered me so much in the first few pages. I was like, I'm not ready. I'll, they say books have their seasons. Yes. I'm definitely ready to go there. Interesting. And I'm going into my, I'm no longer blaming other people. My mom should have, my dad should have, my ex-husband should have, mm. my children should have. It's the Samke show now. The Samke show. It's the Samke show. Oh, we're so excited to continuously see what's going to happen in the Samke show. I know that it's going to be filled with elegance. It's going to be filled <laughs> with excellence. And it's going to be filled with just 
everything awesome. So thank you so much for joining us on the Resonate podcast. We love you. We love Twa. How much, um, how much is it to join the membership for Twa? $50 a month, payable quarterly in advance. So have my $150 down or please yeah. don't come. Awesome. <laughs> So we're going to put a link in the description bar for those that would cool. like to join. Also yes. the link to the Twa page. But yes. Samke, we love you and Thank you're part of the Resonate fam. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having me. Love you right back and can't wait to see you continue to grow, continue to grow others and build out this empire because there's never been a better time to be black, to be female and to use the power that comes so naturally to us, which is the power of storytelling. Oh. And that is really what I'd like every person listening to this or watching this to take away, to step into their power and to lean into their story. Mm. You make me so emotional. <laughs> you make me very emotional. Thank you so much. Thank you, Resonators, for tuning in to the Resonate podcast. This has been such an awesome episode. If you liked it, let us know in the comment section what did you really love. There were so many takeaways, so many gems that I really think you need to be noting down if you have not already. We love you guys so much, and we'll see you on the next episode. Ah. How can you not be transformed after watching such an amazing episode? Did you guys hear all the things Samke was sharing? Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in. But I want this conversation to continue. What did you learn the most from this episode? And what did you truly get? I have a lot of notes. I literally have watched it several times, even before we release it. And I was watching it with you. I was also listening it with you if you were not watching it on YouTube. So I want to know. What did you get the most and what will you be improving in your content, in your communication, in your speaking career and in everything that we spoke about? Let me know in the comment section and we'll see you in our next podcast episode.